Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, uh, hi. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some stuff that I have been asked recently by not only, like, other people, but my students, in fact. What do you like about Japan? What do you not like about Japan? So today's thing is going to be 22 things you like about Japan and 22 things you don't like about Japan. It's going to be a sort of checkerboard pattern. Uh, I printed a checkerboard just to make that metaphor. But I can't fill the entire checkerboard up because I'm lazy. You should know this from the titles of my other things. Here we go. Uh, number one, the food is delicious. Number two, the Denny's in Japan sucks. It doesn't even have, like, very good food at all, let alone actually Denny's food. Number three, there are used bookstores basically anywhere. If I want a book, I can go down the street and find one. Number four, telephones are prohibitively expensive. Even the crap phones, the ones that are not zero yen, are kind of expensive. Number five, arcades have cool games sometimes. They've got, like, the Gundam game that you can get in the pod and, you know, pilot a Gundam and whatnot. Number six, they also have a lot of stupid slot machine and pachinko games, uh, which are boring and dumb and they just waste your money. You don't really get anything out of it. Number seven, trains run on time most of the time. Um, very rarely are they actually late. Number eight, buses basically never run on time, which is dumb because they're buses and they've got a schedule thing and they don't follow it. Number nine, vending machines take, uh, like, the Japanese equivalent of a $10 bill. They take a 1,000 yen bill, which is awesome because in America, they won't, the highest thing that they can take is a $1 bill, and it's very rare that I've got a $1 bill. Um, but number ten, most vending machines are full of little tiny cans of coffee. I don't drink coffee, so that's kind of lame. Number eleven, te uh, telephone technology is, like, really widespread and useful. It's, everyone's got this, like, a smartphone or a really nice, you know, flip phone. Flip phones are still a thing here, by the way. And everyone knows how to use mail on there and whatnot and can look things up on the internet. But, uh, number 12, because of this, nobody actually knows how to use a real computer. That's why kids, they're, like, you know, third or fourth year in, or rather, second or third year in middle school, um, I have to, you know, take classes on how to move a mouse, click a button, and push things on the keyboard. Number 13, healthcare is awesome. You can get medicine for relatively cheap. Uh, there's a whole lot of good stuff about it. Number 14, unless you are actually physically injured. Uh, at which point the healthcare kind of sucks because nobody actually knows what to do unless you go to a very specialized doctor for it. Number 15, public parks and pools are very well maintained. Uh, if something breaks, it's fixed relatively quickly, it's relatively clean, all the weeds get pulled out of it and whatnot. Number 16, if you want to swim in a public pool, you have to wear a swim cap and goggles. There's no negotiating on that. I don't know why. Number 17, there are places to participate in cultural activities like martial arts and flower arranging basically all over the place. Like, I looked for maybe 10 minutes and found a karate dojo that I hung out with for a while. Number 18, good luck getting into these groups if you are a foreigner, and even less if you don't speak Japanese. Of course, there's always the, 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 the exception to that rule. Like, for instance, I walked into the dojo and was like, hi, what's up? And they were like, OMG, you're a foreigner and you speak Japanese, you're amazing, can you stay in our dojo with us forever? And that was great. I didn't stay with them forever, you know, but anyway. Uh, so, you know, there's always exceptions to that rule. Number 19, people are always impressed by the Japanese that you speak, even if you just speak a little bit. Uh, number 20, people are always impressed by the Japanese level that you speak, even if you've been speaking it to them for three freaking years straight. They're always like, oh my god, you can speak so good Japanese. No, I know I can speak a Japanese, and you know I can speak a Japanese because I've been doing it with you for three years. Uh, number 21, people are genuinely interested in learning English. Number 22, but only after they are out of the period uh, of, like, required English study. So when they're in school, they don't really give a crap. But once they're out of school, they're like, oh, English, that could be kind of cool. Uh, number 23, they have Natish English speakers help write the text textbooks for middle school English classes. Number 24, those foreigners must be constantly high, stupid, or dead during the writing process because the textbooks are crap. Like, the, the most used textbook that we've got in Fukushima is called New Horizon, and it's absolutely awful, and it teaches the ability, or rather, it teaches that it's okay to start an English sentence with the word, but. And that's stupid, so stop doing that. Uh, number 25, there are a lot of opportunities for foreigners to work and live in Japan. Number 26, as long as you are willing to sign lots of contracts, pay lots of money for, like, housing and stuff, and work hours that you don't want to which is kind of crap. Number 27, Japanese green tea is delicious. It's awesome. It's amazing. Number 28, don't put it into literally everything. I went down, to, uh, went to the, across the street to get, like, myself some cream bread, you know, bread with cream on the inside, and it was green tea green bread. So then I went to get myself some yogurt, and they've got green tea yogurt. Then I went to get myself some freaking ice cream, green tea ice cream. I suppose that one's not that bad, but then I went over to get a shoe cream, and it was a green tea shoe cream. <sighs> 
Number 29, convenience stores are super convenient and have a lot of stuff that you want. They have, like, big bags of rice, batteries, shaving tools, underwear if you've forgotten it somewhere. Uh, you know, it's just an actually convenient convenience store. Store. Uh, number 30, they also have racks of softcore pornography right by the front door and the window. So I don't know what to think about that. Number 31, local produce is generally really delicious stuff. It's like succulent, sweet, good big old peaches in, in Fukushima and all of that. Number 32, it's also kind of expensive for very small amounts of things, like a thing of cherries right now for like this big of a package of cherries is something like four bucks. And I'm not okay with that. Uh, fruit especially, like any kind of fruit is super hella expensive. Number 33, Japanese internet is pretty good with deviations based on your location in the country, of course. And number 34, the banks in Japan won't use the internet because they still use paper for all their transactions. My bank account at the post office, which by the way you can be the bank account at the post office, is held in a book. On paper, and what if the place burns down? Anyway, uh, number 35, telephone reception is pretty good. Number 36, unless you have AU telephone service, at which point you're boned. Number 37, people in Japan realize that anime and manga are not just for kids. Number 38, that is why that they pander to their audiences way too much and have a series about literally everything. Which is why they've got the series about, like, the AKB people and all that crap. They've got a crap ton of... of sports series, people, stuff that nobody watches anymore, but they still do just because it's a thing. It's ridiculous. Uh, number 39, there's a huge cosplay scene in Japan, even in Koryama, the city in, like, Fukushima, where, you know, um, there's a huge thing. They happen, you know, once or twice a month. But number, uh, 40, they don't make their own costumes, and they don't cosplay anything older than three years or so, unless it's, like, Common Rider or something that's so absolutely iconic that you absolutely can't miss it. I cosplayed something from Disgaea, and everyone was like, what the crap is that? So then I cosplayed something from Dot Hack, and they were like, what the crap is that? So then I cosplayed something from, something from, something from, and I just cosplayed the older things, and everyone was like, I have no idea what you're doing, dude. Uh, number 41, Japanese yellow plate cars, as opposed to the white plate cars, which are basically the same size as the ones that we have in America and other places in the world, are smaller, more compact, better at gas management, and easier to park. Number 42, owning a car in Japan is an absolute nightmare every couple of years when Shaken, which is like the, um, car insurance thing that you gotta do in Japan, comes up, because it's stupid expensive, and a whole lot of extra work. Number 43, Japan's population is slowly, very slowly, getting better at dealing with the rest of the world. They're getting a little bit more, uh, internationalized when all these things happen. They're inviting more people to, you know, help with their international stuff. But, number 44, unfortunately, the country is still run by people who were alive when the pointy stick was invented and do not believe in change or progress whatsoever in this country, which is why we still have paper stuff done in the banks and the ATMs close at 9 o'clock. So anyway, that's my list of 44 things. Um, 22 of good and 22 of bad. Tell me the things that you think in the comments, uh, and, you know, call me all kinds of names and things because I said something bad about Japan, and then tell me that I'm actually right about a couple things because you've lived here. I don't care what you do, uh, but that's the, the, these are the factoids that I'm going to present to you whether you believe them or not because they are my personal experience. All right, talk to you guys later.